G'day friends and welcome to our bushfire safety system install series. This was a massive project that took about five full days to complete and we ended up learning way too much to condense into one video. So this episode is part two where we'll be assembling all of the fittings including the junctions and isolation points, the two hydrant points for putting out spot fires and most importantly the six sprinklers. Then we will flush out the system to remove any sediment in the pipes and test the finished product. So let's put on our work boots and get stuck into it. For anybody who missed out on episode one or needs a reminder of the site plan, it was decided that we needed a two inch poly pipeline from the dam to the mound, which then separated off into two one and a half inch lines. One was a loop around the mound for the sprinklers and the other line was for the hydrants. I also found out that the sprinklers can spray at a radius of 14 meters, which meant that there would be some nice overlaps. Assembling all of the components in store is a good way to make sure that you don't forget how to put it all together when you get back home. So here is our two inch line going from the pump to the mound. And then this first two inch T intersection splits off to the one and a half inch hydrants line and then continues to the second two inch T intersection that connects the loop of pop-up sprinklers. All of the components can be isolated with the 1.5 inch ball valve for the hydrants and two inch ball valve for the sprinklers. And this part is the foot valve. It lets water in but doesn't let it out to allow for easier priming every time you start the pump. The first polypipe fitting that you can see here is called a polypipe end connector with a male thread. We were figuring these things out as we went, so you will see us use some random tools while learning what was most useful. For example, you can use a plank to knock in the fittings, but a rubber mallet works way better. And you also don't need to use plumbing tape on threads that connect o-rings like in this case because the o-ring is the seal here not the tape and these rubber strap wrenches for oil filters they worked all right for poly pipe fittings but a tool that is way better for circular fittings is the oil filter pliers because unlike other tools with a flat grip they are round and therefore do not squish circular fittings like a pipe wrench or multi-grips would just introduce this section and going forward all the connections are the same so we've got this big two inch poly pipe it goes from the firefighter pump it's going to connect like that and this T here is going to create the loop around the mound of sprinklers and this is where we're going to turn it on and turn it off taps pretty tight and the other T is on the way to this one. And this is the, the firefighter hose mounting point. So we've essentially got one two inch poly pipe and it gets separated into three one and a half inch outlets. All right, so there's our two inch pipe and first T is getting joined onto it. This is something I never thought about until I did it wrong one time because we're going to be twisting it this way, clockwise. We want the tape to twist the same way, clockwise. Otherwise, this loose end would get undone when you start twisting it on. What I find with these fittings is the plastic to plastic, even when I don't put the tape on, it doesn't really leak but you know, so that we don't have to fix it later on. For longevity, we're gonna put the tape on. And now this poly pipe fitting here is called a reducing nipple. I've got no idea why it's called that, but it is what it is. Anyway, a standard poly pipe nipple has the same diameter thread on both sides and a reducing nipple has a smaller thread on one side. 
And this new flash tool for us is called uh, Multi Grips. We got these from Super Cheap Auto for a really good price, and they worked great for most purposes. But as mentioned before, Multi Grips have a flat grip. And when you have large round fittings, it squishes them into ovals and therefore makes it harder to tighten the fittings and can even break them. For this nipple, we have this ball valve, or in other words, a tap. So if you can see how that works, they're always very tight when they're brand new. So that's how these things work. We've got our ball valve going on now. Being nice and careful as well, every time you start a thread, you have to be very careful not to cross thread it. Because if you do, it's going to be very hard to get the fitting on. And we've got our elbow join. How exciting, the system's coming together already. So that's going to go down in here like so. And I guess we can already see that uh, unfortunately this trench is going to need to be widened to make room for the rest of the assembly to go in like so. Alrighty, so on the latest update we started at 12.30 or something, now it's 2.15. It's taken me almost two hours to get this far. But slowly, slowly we're getting there. So as you can see, this pipe right here has changed direction because I thought I had it all figured out, but then I realized that to get this pipe going all the way here would have been a bit too hard. I would have had to dig this whole area out, even though I already had to take back some of the dirt because as you can see, poly pipe is not easy to curve. I mean, two inch, you pretty much can't curve it past its natural curvature. But the one and a half inch, you can see, here's the challenge that it needs to go this way, but it's on this angle. So to bend it now, you have to have it bend in that whole direction right there. So we've had to widen all of our trenches to take into account the curvature that the poly pipe requires. So we're going to be flexing it like that. Hence I created all that extra room there. And now we need to make a cut. You really need these pipe cutters for a job like this. And so as for where we're cutting it, when this connector is on the poly pipe, it inserts into this bit like so. So we pretty much need to have the cut flush with where the pipe is going to be on the joint underneath. Just like that. Now I think I showed you how these fittings work already, but practice makes perfect. So this part goes on first, then comes this part. Make sure the pipe is clean. And now we've got to force this bit in there. So basically the whole assembly sits like that and then this bit screws on to here and this seal goes inside there <clears throat> all right so we've got this thingamabob here up against the fitting and it is sticking out slightly ever so slightly but the rest of that will be tightened by this part here so 
that's all complete now and that bucket looking thing right there that's going to go upside down and on top of these two so we're going to still have to trim those to size there's two of them and they're going to sit next to each other right there covering those ball valves Anyway, we've got our first hydrant point going in. That's the uh, ball valve, and it sits on a riser sticking out of the ground. This metal pipe's called the riser. And here is a T, a one and a half inch T, um, with a reducing bush in there to accommodate for the smaller size riser. <coughs> So what we're going to do here is, as you can see, poly pipe runs through to down there where the other hydrant point is. So what we're going to do is, we're going to cut this pipe and insert the T. So let's go ahead and do that. So that comes in like so, and we'll cut this a bit before it. So that's how you can tell it's a hot day. It's a lot easier to fit these fittings when it's nice and warm. And can confirm the rubber mallet is much better than a timber plank. Okay, so we've got the riser in now, <clears throat> and this just had some tape wrapped around it, and it's just screwed in like so. So nothing new here, we've seen how to wrap tape, we know how to screw things in, so there you have it. It's a nice pipe sticking out, and next step is to install this ball valve with an elbow in it. And so here's another tip I learned from YouTube when using plumber's tape. Uh, if you notice how the roll is now, we're winding it this way. See that going clockwise towards me? But instead of having the roll like this, we have to maintain the tension by holding the tape. If we do it this way, then the roll of tape helps you to maintain the pressure a lot easier and I can't emphasize enough the importance of putting enough pressure on this tape otherwise it has a tendency to try and twist with whatever fitting is going on it it might just twist along the thread and it just it looks crap really so nice and tight is the way to go I even start at this end and as I progress down here, I overlap a little bit more here to make it thicker here, thinner here, so that it's easier to start on the thread. And when the thread's nice and secure, coming along the fitting, that's when it starts to get thick and it gets tighter to screw the thing on. And you know you've got a good seal that way. Very exciting. We get to put on our ball valve now. So we're going to have, when it's in the open position, it's going to face the hose that's coming off it. And that should be 
much more intuitive than facing this way. So here we go. Just borrow our jumbo spanner for this job and finish it up. Voila, last step for this hydrant point is we've got a nipple. I know, it looks nothing like an actual nipple, at least not like my nipple anyway, but that's what it's called. So we've got the nipple going on here, and we've got this little fitting here, which is what the firefighter hose actually slips onto, and is held in place by a hose clamp. So let's go ahead and put these on. So there you have it, we've got our first hydrant point done and we've got one more to go. Okay, we're at the other end now, the hydrant point's there, roofs and Luna are there and we're ready to do the same thing here except this one's got an elbow on the end, not a T obviously because this end terminates. So the click thing worked pretty cool last time, let's see if we can do that again. Ha! Look at that, off-grid magic and off-grid dad jokes. <laughs> Beautiful, time to bury it all. Well, most people have heard of a rake and a shovel. This is something that's new to me. It's called a, a garden tamper or just a tamping tool. And that's also courtesy to a YouTube video I watched. Love learning new stuff there. So this tool just helps to provide an extra nice finish. If you're not heavy enough, I guess, to stomp around and make it this flat. Of course, a bit of extra moisture in the ground would really help to get it nice and compact. But for the time being, Hardly tell now that there was a pipe under there that that used to be a trench All right guys, it's now finally time to install the actual sprinklers So let's have a look at how we're gonna do that <clears throat> So we got the loop of poly pipe coming around the mound like so and here we've got one of our sprinkler points So As you can see We've already dug a little bit of a hole because the sprinkler Obviously, it's a pop-up sprinkler, so it needs to be underground. So let's take a look at how that's going to work. So here's an example of one of the assemblies. And it's going to sit like so. So this is called a riser in between. And you can actually buy custom-made ones of these but we've assembled it ourselves with uh, one elbow, two elbow, a short riser here. We've got another elbow and we've got a reducing bush here. So that's gonna sit like so. And why we have all these elbow joints, you might be wondering, it's so that in the future we can adjust the position. You can spin it this way, you can spin it this way, any way you like if you want it to go lower you can do so if you want the sprinkler to sit higher you can also do so if you top dress your lawn and how does this fitting connect to the poly pipe itself you might be wondering so for that we use a saddle of course you could use one of those t sections as well that we used earlier where you can just cut the poly pipe but those T-sections are pretty expensive, so that's why we opted for these saddles. They're a bit cheaper, and they essentially do the same job. And they're probably easier to work with too. So basically they clamp around the poly pipe. 
and they've got a seal here as well so they sit nice and firm on the one inch poly pipe and all we need to do is drill a hole through the poly pipe so the water comes out through here and into the sprinkler assembly there we go So I don't know how well you guys can see that, but the hole's pretty close to being the size of this washer. So it's time to assemble the saddle. Something that might seem obvious is to always make sure that you double check that you got the washer in the right spot there so you probably couldn't see the hole in there just then but that's basically what i did and now that everything's ready to go we just tighten it using modern day technology don't need to go crazy tight and that's that Now that we've got this saddle on the poly pipe, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just one by one attach all of these little bits to the saddle. Just gonna assemble it like so. But they all need some plumber's tape on them first. So that's what we'll do before we get started. Welcome back guys and girls. So we've got all of our attachments ready to go. They've all been wrapped with the plumber's tape and that's what I mean when I say this can be a pretty time consuming process because all of these fiddly things take time and if you're doing it properly, like the plumbers at the irrigation store highly recommend, uh, yeah, it all just adds up. <laughs> Putting plumbers tape and everything, assembling so many little bits and pieces. But in the end, the aim is to have a project that only needs to be done once. Very exciting. Time to get the sprinkler now. So these are the pop-up sprinklers, by the way, I don't know if I've showed you these already. basically the way they work is the water comes in through here and the pressure of the water pushes it up like so and this twists around like so And now we've got a really cool assembly here that can go up, down, twist this way, that way. And because the mound is on a hill, we're gonna twist it like this a little bit. And it's going to sit in the ground like so. No mallet, no worries. So 
So luckily, with our cam locks, we can now do this a bit easier. Next up, we set up our pump at a small pond in our property to flush out the system, to remove sediment in the pipes and to test everything out. I am now. Holy moly. And as you guys saw, the water was pretty brown to start with and then cleared up. And there wasn't a special valve to flush out the sprinkler line, we just unscrewed their tops to do this. After making sure there was nothing in the system to clog up the sprinklers, it was time to test the system. And it was a pretty magical moment to see six sprinklers throwing water all around us all at once and we were so relieved that all the hours and hours of work finally paid off. And as a bonus, even while the sprinklers are going, the pressure was still sufficient enough to have the fire hose going as well. In the next two episodes, we'll share our firefighter pump setup with you guys, and also some really useful charts and calculations for determining pipe sizes, flow rates, and other features to ensure you build your system right the first time. And as always, Thanks for stopping by our channel and don't forget to like, comment or subscribe if you find our video useful.